All right, everybody. Uh, this is Krieger Margin One. Um, we will be having at least Mike, uh, Mike, Mike, check also doing this review and Orphan Joker. We will be starting a new series that we'll be reviewing, starting with the Alien franchise. So we're gonna view this from a canological order instead of when they were made. We just finished watching Alien vs. Predator from 2003. One of the greatest movies ever made. I literally puked while watching this movie. It's not a joke. He actually puked from <laughs> watching because he couldn't handle, he couldn't keep inside of him his joy. Of how good this movie is. So this movie had a budget of $70 million. <laughs> it hit a box office at $177.4 million. <laughs> they spent a shit ton on this movie, and they made also another shit ton back. Two shit tons, if you will. However, the critics do not think this is a good movie. <laughs> they rated it 2.0. <laughs> the audience puts it at 3.9, according to Rotten Tomatoes. But overall, people think it's subpar. This is going to be a longer thing for me than I normally do because there's quite a bit of actually random facts that are interesting about this film. I really liked the sacrifice room. Um, they actually, um, whenever you go to the sacrifice room, the way that they have the pod set up are the exact same way that they have in the original Alien. Uh, throughout this film, uh, the director has a lot of very, very, very small things um, that they put in for hints of hardcore fans of both series. Um, like earlier in the uh, thing, they're going over what appears to be an. A it's in. It's whenever they're showing a satellite or whatever beginning of the film, and the shadow of it looks like the Queen Alien, but then whenever it shows it, it reveals to be a satellite. So they did a lot of things like that. I really enjoyed the Predators in this film. They were really badass. I'm always really partial to Predators over Aliens. Um, however, it's clear that, and I saw complaints online that the directors and the writers were very more favorable to the aliens because they, the aliens kind of kicked the Predator's ass pretty easily. There's a lot of cool traps through the thing, um, through the pyramid as they went down into it, so I really enjoyed that. The blast doors was really nice. Whenever she tried to slide the uh, the chest under the blast door, and then, and then fucking it just sliced, cut through it like it was nothing. That was cool. The nerd's face, went, whenever they went into the facehugger room, like the facehuggers first appeared, was fucking priceless. The facehuggers in general are scary as fuck. I would never wish that on my worst enemy, let alone all the extra people that were just there for cannon fodder. Whenever the predator kills the alien, um, after he, he already kills the, the facehugger, and then it's like, oh no, this one snuck up on him. He just did like a Chuck Norris moment where he's just like, Phew. nah, I just cut your head off. You're done. That, that was my favorite part of the movie. Like, that was a highlight for me. Um, I really liked, and finally, uh, I really liked the fight scenes overall in this film because um, they did a lot of a animatronic um, aspects of it. Uh, like with the actual the actual queen, I'll get down to it, but that was all animatronic, and it was a, like record setting for this time for what they were able to do with this. The first half of the movie seemed like there was no alien or predator um, in it. Other than, like, uh, there's a small glance whenever the Predator was standing there. Um, so, I really disliked that. Uh, there's a really slow pace through the film. Um, I didn't like the guns for this movie. Um, the, the the lasers on the bottom that are supposed to be, like, wayfinders, um, those looked fake as shit. Like, they couldn't even use real ones. It looked like they just CGI'd it in. So, that was really bad. Um, obviously, it's 2003. So quality is not fantastic. They said that this temple is 2,000 feet in, in the ground, and they scaled down 2,000 feet real fucking quick. I don't, I don't, and up at the end of the movie. So I, th I don't know. I'm not an expert on how to traverse this, but I'm pretty sure that's shitty. The predator roar was awful. It was a lion. Uh, it was a lion. Ah! Clearly, sound-bited lion that was added in post-production. <laughs> At random spots that seemed like it'd be convenient. Like, it feels like something I would try to make in a video where I'm just lazy and I just go, like, I'm going to add this in somewhere where it makes sense instead of actually thinking. Acid logic pissed me off in this film. There are several times where, where acid should have leaked onto somebody and it didn't. And that, that was super annoying. And then the bomb at the end pissed me off. Um, I'm assuming by the looks of the bomb being blue, it looks like some kind of plasma bomb or a pa plasma grenade thing. But... As it goes to explode, it looks more like a normal bomb as the blue just disappears. So um, it's, 
again predator technology but like it didn't it didn't make sense to me logistically on how that would form together so uh arnold schwarzenegger was in predator one and he was actually offered a role in this movie but only if he lost his election when he went to go run for governor and he famously won that election um so he was not in the movie that was that was contingent on that in the beginning of the movie there's some morse code um the morse code actually says whoever wins we lose this movie which i've heard mike utter this in previous movies but this is literal development hell this film took over 10 years to make um <coughs> through several different directors and actors and it was it was hell literal literal hell almost as bad as i'm not even gonna mention it freddy versus jason so i mentioned a little bit about the queen so one big thing around this time in the early 2000s was animatronics um from jurassic park from whenever they had the t-rex that was animatronic that was like breaking records doing something like this the queen actually had twice the amount of moving parts and took six people to operate her doing during different things so all these fight scenes you see that are cool there's six people doing that and there's like a fuck ton of moving parts it was probably one of the most expensive things to do in this whole movie so that's why i'm really appreciative of the fight scene and all that they do it's not it's not like they do one cheap thing where it's a little fight little punch here little punch here then you go off the cliff it, it's it's a lot that they do in a lot of pieces and i couldn't imagine doing it all of the predators were played by a guy named ian white spelled with a y that's dumb who spells the name with a y like that um anyways during this whole film alien and predator both those words are never said they call them serpents or um i believe hunters would be the, the other term so um this one was interesting so they filmed this in prague because of budgetary reasons they already had a 70 million dollar budget and they wanted to keep it above 50 million when they were choosing a location um like for their total budget so they got a quote on how much it would cost to film this in Hollywood at a studio, um, and then they would make all their props because they made all of their scenes from scratch here. So all, anything you see, it was made on set. Um, it cost them $2 million to do all of the set work in Prague, but if they were to do it in Hollywood, it would have cost them $20 million. So obviously that's that's a really cool, huge deal. The queen's age is is like centuries, years old, and it's, it's known that as they get older, they grow bigger like that, uh, so that's interesting. This is the only alien or predator film that hit PG-13. That's why they released an unrated edition of this, which didn't really do much, no different. which didn't do any different, but it helped. Okay, so the lead actor who's playing the predator, um, he actually ran on the beaches with stones attached to his chest to get to to get bulk up and get ready for his role as the predators i also find it interesting that they have that i, I wrote down a hellboy director there's something to do with hellboy with this director i i think this was the director for hellboy or they had the director for hellboy initially this is the director or the producer of the entire fucking resident evil series we just finished you're welcome. I forgot her first name, but Weaver, the lady from that's famous for the uh, Alien franchise. Um, so she, yeah. So she was actually asked if she would ever be in this movie or do a crossover, and she said, "And I quote, that idea sounds awful. Sometimes in Hollywood, when there's snow, they want to add more snow to make it look more snowy. So they actually used between 15 and 20 tons of fake snow in this film. The Queen is supposedly lo uh, larger than a T-Rex." and longer than a blue whale, which is like 86 feet. Okay, so the three predators that they have actually have three different names. Um, one's name is Celtic, the next name is Chopper, and the third one is Scar. Scar is the main one that we see face the queen. So these are actual ones from the comic books that they labeled as their actual names. So I've taken up a good amount of time for this. Um, I'm gonna give my review. This was a really hard one for me to review because it's an aged film. It's not perfect, it's not great, it's not the worst, though. So I'm going to put this dead even in the middle as a five at okay for me. This is an okay film. I feel like if it wasn't so slow paced, it'd be better, and I give it serious points for the animatronics and actually getting this movie done. I felt this movie on a spiritual level deep in my tummy. And the gross feeling in my tummy matches the gross taste in my mouth, which I normally would 
feeling a existential side feeling about this movie, but I'm actually feeling it for realsy. So I'm not gonna be able to comment on the whole movie because I spent the last five minutes in the bathroom back there puking. This movie was interesting. I'm somebody who's only seen the first Alien movie, and I saw it a long time ago, and the most recent Alien movie. Um, and so I have, like, no idea anything about the Predators, Aliens, like, other than what people have, like, blabbed about online or a couple other things or somebody said in conversation or you know, I've seen pictures of them and I have to agree with Krieger Margin. I feel like the Aliens had way too much control in this. Um, we had some discussion at the beginning that was confusing about, you know, did the Predators set this? Like, did the Predators plan for this to happen? Because it, it seems like it did at first, but then as you go along, it's like, oh, no, they're trying to stop this. They they didn't even know what the heck was going on themselves. They're like, what the heck is this? Like, they discovered it. And we're like, what the heck is this? So the dialogue in this movie was bad. They didn't say anything interesting, and they said a whole bunch of it. With really weird pauses in it. And long, silent talking points with no music. The aliens, the predators, the facehuggers, they all looked good. I have to say that that's something I did like in this movie. I don't think I don't think there was anything in there that disappointed me the way that they, they looked. They looked really good. Funny dynamic. My f favorite part in the movie, and it's not like favorite part as much as it was like the most goofiest. And it's the part I'm going to remember. Girl, like, don't kill me. I have a super high-powered laser gun. Guy blast it goes, pretty good gun, lady. I'll return the favor. I'll give you a shield and a stick. And I went immediately after that to go puke. And so I have no idea if she actually got to use it or if she even survived. Hey, guys, did she survive? Yes. Did she use the stick? Did she kill something with it? The stick that the predator gave her? The yeah. Man? The alien staff. Yeah, that was stupid. The movie wasn't terrible. I've definitely seen a bunch of movies that were worse. Um, this movie was not necessarily like horrible, but it was not very enjoyable either. There were moments where I was like, I don't want to watch this movie. Probably because I'm sick feeling. Probably because I had to puke. But, you know... I stuck around just because I didn't want to have to cut out on the review. I didn't stick around because, like, it was actually interesting in any way. Um, there are definitely movies that are like, I'm going to stick around even if I puke in the trash can. No, I was like, I'm going to get up. I'm going to leave the room. I didn't understand the movie. Like, why was this movie important? I mean, I kind of understand they have to interact with the Mayans and how the aliens got on the planet and blah, 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 but... Overall, I felt like this movie didn't really have to be here. And it was kind of long and drawn out. There was a bunch of death here that was like taken off screen. Also, uh, Krieger mentioned this. One of the reasons I don't think this is a good movie is the aliens just aged way too fast. It's like they were in there for 30 minutes and the huggers had already dropped eggs. Or the, the mom had already dropped eggs. The eggs had already traveled. They popped, and then they po after they popped, literally the girl like gets infected, wakes up five minutes later, and she's in this. It's already in her stomach, already ready to pop out. I'm like that's, you know, I haven't seen too much of Alien, but I've seen the original, and that doesn't seem accurate. And then also like five minutes later, like literally five minutes later, or maybe six, seven minutes later, because it's the first time the place shifts. There's aliens there. And it's already slimed on this guy's gun. And literally, 10 minutes later, there's like 12 of them running around. I'm going to give this a four and a half. Four being poor, five being fair, meaning it's it's poor, but it's fair. All right, making this short and sweet. I've seen this film three or four times. This film has not changed at all one bit. This film is overall... It's not good. It's bad. But it's bearable to watch. But it's still bad. Doesn't make any fucking sense. It's incredibly dumb. Now I have more reason why I hate it because I realize who the director is. I thought we got away from him. Hopefully this is the last time we deal with him. 
I don't know, it's just this film doesn't really do anything for me. It 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 just doesn't do anything at all. Like it's nothing like compared to the sequel that we're going to review later on. But this film it doesn't do anything for me. It's not that great. It's just it's bad. It's bearable, but it's bad. Hopefully this is the last time I'll get to see it. <laughs> This film will get a three and a half out of ten because, granted, it is far better than the sequel by a goddamn mile, but it's still bad. So there you have it. I don't think we have to do any um, group discussion. There are some elements of this film that's good, but just because, it's just, <laughs> there are tiny things in this film that work, but it's nothing to do with the plot. The setting, cool. The animatronics, cool. The CGI, spotty. Acting, bad. Story, bad. Pacing, horrible. Produce production of this movie. Looks like it went through the nine stages of hell. But the setting, the pieces, and the animatronics and stuff, and the C spotty CGI is okay. Everything else? As long as it's better than AVPR. That's all that matters. What's AVPR? This is Mike Check 95 of another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review. We're going to be reviewing Literal Trash in our next review, so we're signing out right now. Peace.